Hello, YouTube friend. Ben Ochart here. Thank you so much for tuning in. A, um, a few weeks ago, we looked at the stock in what I call my 60-gallon grow-out, my Juvie Hap Nation, hashtag Juvie Hap Nation tank. And uh, this week, let's take a look at what's going on in the 100. Um, there's a lot going on in there. There's been some new additions. There's been some fish that had to be transferred into that tank. Let's take a look at what's going on there and be sure to uh, share your comments below, rate and sub if you haven't already. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, let's, get, let's get right into it. Let's take a look at the, this is a 100 gallon acrylic tank that is uh, being filtered by a Fluval FX6. And I've got a couple power heads in there keeping the water uh, moving and keeping uh, any waste or detritus moving towards the intake of the FX6 which is doing a great job despite the, uh, the large bio load in the tank. So let's take a look. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's start the look at the 100 with this beautiful yellow Benga, also called a yellow Regal. Picked him up from Trevor O'Shea at the Wonder of Cichlids. I just love the, um, the bright, bright yellow and the blue to purple face just a beautiful fish. Really looks good with the black background, black uh, substance. And here is the uh, Malawi trout. And uh, I always wanted to grow one of these out, but it was taking me forever. And on two occasions, it turned out to be female. So I finally went ahead and, uh, and picked this beautiful specimen up, again, from Wonder of Cichlids. And you can see the markings on the uh, anal fin around the face. Already has some good size. This is going to be a beautiful fish. At some point, he will have to come out and go to the 150. These fish can get over 12 inches. Here's the, um, the deep water hap, often referred to as a Placidochromus electra. And um, just love the colors on this guy. He's... Uh, He's got some great, great, great color around the gills. Has some markings on the anal fin, which you don't normally see on the Electras. Nice prominent bar right behind the gills. Just a beautiful fish. First cousin to this uh, Maduka, Maduka White Lips. Also the Placidochromis family. Picked him up from uh, Paul the Inventory King up in the Northwest. And uh, just a very hardy, very beautiful fish. Great shade of blue that contrasts tremendously with those white lips. And of course, those white lips contrast great with the black background. Another cousin in the family here is the uh, Star Sapphire. And uh, just a, another great looking fish trying to get some chips. And... Uh, Another look here at the uh, deep water swimming around the algae scrubber on the right side of the tank. And this is a flavescent. Love this fish. Peacock. Beautiful colors and beautiful markings throughout the body and on the tail. And this is a, another Plastidochromis I have in here called a gazelle. The smaller of the Plastidochromis I have, very, very docile. I suspect the gazelle will stay in this tank for quite a while. At some point, the White Lips and the Star Sapphire will have to go out to the 150, the 150 gallon, because they're just a little bit too, they'll, they'll get too big for this tank. They can get upwards of 10 inches. Here's, um, let's see, let's take a look. Let's uh, get some aggression there from the trout. He is definitely a predator. Don't forget that. But let's take a look at the uh, the uh, three-spot torpedo, the Exochromus anginus. Picked him up from uh, Cunningham Cichlids. And uh, has that beautiful pencil mustache. We, we went to go name him, and we ended up with uh, Earl... Finn, <laughs> as his 
official name, but he's got some great markings, and I just can't wait for more blue to come in around the face. And uh, just a great fish. Pretty peaceful. Keeps to himself. Not nearly as aggressive as the um, as the trout. Another look from another angle at the flavescent. Love how the blue in the face contrasts with the uh, the yellow in the body, and of course has a little bit of blue throughout the yellow as well. And then they get that uh, different type of marking in the tail. I also have in here a what is referred to sometimes as a turquoise hap. And uh, these become uh, a deep green, a blue-green throughout the body. They can get pretty big. They're, already, they're, they're protomelous, so you do have to have some, some veggies in their diet. They're not strictly a carnivore like the majority of fish in here. And they can put on some good size. They might end up in the 150. We'll see. I have an Autopharynx ovatus in here. Um... It's a cousin to my autopharynx tetrastigma that is in the 150. Picked him up at a local fish store and uh, is really starting to show a lot of promise. Beautiful anal fin and uh, tail. The ruby red, the uh, robescens, ruby red, also referred to as Grant's peacock. One of my favorite peacocks especially the way the uh, blue can become almost like a gray-blue-purple in the face. And you can see he's starting to put on tremendous color. The, um, the blue neon has always been one of my favorites. Very similar to a bicolor 500. And um, this guy's been really, just re really outstanding since I got him. And uh, I also have a bushy nose sometimes referred to as a bristle nose, bristle nose pleco. Been living in here for, well, quite a while since I set the tank up. And I also have a synodonis. Love these catfish, they have a lot of character. This is a, a, a bigger synodonis. I have a, one that is a, a bit of a pygmy in the 60 gallon. This one put on size and was double the size of the other one in just in no time at all. So he came over to the 100. I also have three clown uh, loaches in here. I uh, saw somebody with a cichlid tank a couple of years ago who had uh, clowns in there, and I said, well, let me try them. And, and then I heard all the different controversy back and forth. And, but these three have done very, very well in here. I call them los tres amigos. And um, I've had them for several years. I know there's concerns about their size and this and what have you, but you can see they're, they're still very comparable. And they have no trouble getting food. They get right up there and grab food just like the rest of the fish. The cichlids leave them completely alone. You'll notice that the Z-Rock has been moved from the 150 into, into this tank. You notice the, um, the injury on his side there. For some reason, this Placidochromus johnsoni is supposed to be... Um, supposed to be a mellow fish, uh, took it upon himself to um, go after and uh, destroy this Z-Rock. And um, I don't know why, you know, you remember in a prior video I put out, I don't know what makes that little switch flip in their heads. I also have a Bicolor 500, which I'm a little concerned about because I have a Neon, but I think they'll get along fine. Whenever you have fish that are similar looking, they sometimes can see each other as competition and go after each other. Um, well, we'll see how these two do. I hope they do well. So there you have it. As you can see, the life of a cichlid keeper, always having to make adjustments, uh, needing to move fish around. That does come with the territory. And uh, I was uh, glad I could catch what was going on in time so I could make the proper arrangements. And... Uh, in a week or so, let's take a look at the tank that's behind me, the uh, 150, also an acrylic tank that's being run by a sump system and a uh, Sun Sun 704B, along with a, uh, with a very powerful powered head 
that also is helping to move waste towards the intakes. So we'll take a look at that tank next time. Until then, thank you so much for tuning in. And again, be sure to, uh, to uh, put, list your comments or make your comments below. Let me know if you think there's some fish I need in that tank. <laughs> make any recommendations you might have. And uh, I do read your comments and I try to respond to, to as many of them as time allows. And uh, be sure to uh, rate and sub and all that good stuff. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.